Welcome back. As, as always, on Fridays, we wrap up the conversation talking sports. And this morning, Wally Scott has joined us uh, to discuss on uh, the new Super Eagles coach uh, that uh, will be announced soon. Good morning to Wally Scott. Thanks for joining us. We hear that uh, Jose Mourinho was contacted or was mentioned in, in the conversation. And I, I fell down laughing uh, when I saw that. <laughs> it's laughable, really. Um, some of us um, who are sports presenters are tired of um, Amadou Pinik's grandstanding. Of course, he didn't contact Jose Mourinho. And, uh, and he just got a job with Roma yes. in Italian Serie A. So he's not going to take a Nigerian job, not now. And we know that I mean, Mourinho is going to coach a national team. It's going to be Portuguese national team, Portugal is country, not Nigeria. And um, Mourinho will never come here. I will advise him not to come because um, it's enough embarrassment the way we treat our coaches. Um, don't forget that General Rowe actually had to take a 20% pay cut in the course of doing his job to keep it. Um, I don't know why he loves Nigeria Agreed. so much. But um, we're hearing that um, a, a Sladic or something, a, a Croatian name, a Czech Republic name, will be named soon. And we're asking ourselves a question. Austin Egwavoin played in the Super Eagles at the grassroots level. This guy knows Nigerian football. And using this as an example, just on the side now, Stephen Keshi yeah. took the Nigerian Super Eagles to the Nations Cup and he won that Nations Cup. And we beat the biggest team in Africa at that point in time. They had Didier Drogba, Kolo Toure, Yaya Toure, Didier Zokora, everybody who mattered in world football, in that Ivorian scene. And we beat them 2-1. And everybody felt it wasn't going to happen. And the Ivorian coach said, listen, if I had a list of people who would give me problems in that match, Sunday Mba, who scored the second goal for yeah. Nigeria, wasn't in that list. Because it was Nigerian-based. We need a coach who is going to look inwards too. We're tired of going to Pakistan, Kazakhstan to go and look for players when we have raw talent in our Nigerian so, league so here. Is it players or coaches we're, you're talking about now? We're talk talking about coaches. We have Austin Aguavoin there now. Yeah. We are hoping that he's the one who's going to take the Nigerian team to the Nations Cup, on, which starts on January 9th. And then we're hoping that um, he will look inwards, even if just two or three players, even if they don't play. So my concern is, you know, for the fact that uh, we constantly have to consider looking outwards, I mean, getting uh, foreign coaches to come coach our own team. Is it that what, you have mentioned some names now. What's the issue? Like, we don't believe in the Basically, people we have? Um, or? Nigeria is the only country that I know that our NFF president, our football pre um, federation president, doesn't talk to us, the journalists. He feels, I don't have to talk to you. He's very arrogant. I'm a Japanese, that is. And nobody, like I'm, I'm, I'm insisting today on the show, no sports presenter can say, I have seen General Ross contracts. We don't know what is, what, what is written there. Ordinarily, in a contract for, by a country to a coach, we'll say, um, improve on your the Nations League. We don't know if that is said in General Ross, and I doubt that. General Ross has never looked inwards. He goes on the internet, and looks for footballers who ply their trades abroad, whether it's Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Pakistan, wherever, but not in Nigeria. And we have talent here. For example, I can boastfully say we don't have a free kick taker in the Super Eagles as we speak. And we have more than five footballers in the Nigerian league who have scored almost all their goals from set pieces. Why can't we look inwards? So what's the problem then? They just don't trust the league. Is it, is it the structure is, it, is, is, the structure it, yeah, is bad, yes. Problem. The structure is bad. And so most coaches don't want to take that risk. But what, I'm, so what I was saying to General Roll then, when I met him at the stadium, um, before Nigeria played um, um, one of our matches for the qualifiers, I told General Roll, I said, listen, I'm not saying play them. At least give them the experience. Let them follow the team abroad. Let them be on the bench. Let them be able to play football. Okay, when they see the Messi one day, they won't be scared. But shouldn't this be a policy of the NFF? Is it dependent on the coach? If we bring a coach from Iraq um, that continues to do the same thing, shouldn't we have like a policy that the NFF puts on ground? Because you don't do this in England. That was what Messi um, just asked me now. Messi said, what's the problem? The problem is simple. None of us have read Gennot Ross' contracts. We don't know what he says. But we believe, most sports analysts in Nigeria believe that it should be part of, it should be a clause in that contract that says, listen, you must improve on your that nation's league in the in, in, in English national team. I remember a point when the EPL, the English Premier League, Barclays English Premier League, insisted that Arsene Wenger had too many foreign-based players in his team. And he must put, and then there was a law 
There's a law in England as we speak. Out of your 11 players on the field of play in England, you must have at least six English players. You no, must. But, well... You um, must have it. If you don't see it on Gennard Raw's contract, shouldn't you see it as a policy of the NFF? Shouldn't it should we be have a policy. Them? So we don't have to look at the, their individual but contracts. we don't have the contract. We don't have the contract, but we insist that we're saying that, listen, well, like I said earlier, Amar Jipinik is the NFF president. He doesn't listen to anyone. He's a very arrogant person. Now, we have been telling him, listen, shouldn't it be part of the coach's contract? That Listen, you must get involved. In fact, I was even... No, I, I'm thinking that what he's asking now is, shouldn't it be part of the NFF, like the entire, you know, football federation? Shouldn't, shouldn't it be it part be of the policy? policy? I'm not talking about the contract being, of the coach. So, so is it part of the policy now? What I suggested at a point, I suggested two things at a point, and I got into big trouble for it, I can assure you. The first, suggest them again. Big trouble. No, I'm just suggesting I, I was suggesting Senate looks into one. If you are a foreign-based company in Nigeria and you work in Nigeria and you're making money from Nigerians, you must invest at least 5% of your earnings, yearly earnings, to a particular sport, whatever sport you want. It doesn't have to be football. You must pay money into it. More, Egypt has, is doing it right now. Secondly, we must have at least three, even if they're on the bench, three home-based players in all our national teams, football, basketball, all, at least three. For the experience. Even if we don't play them, for the experience. Let them travel, let them be part of the travel party and go and play, play with them, whatever, train with them, and then travel with them. And so you realize that at a, at a point in time, we are scared. The average Nigerian is scared when a home-based player is going up against Argentina and is looking at almighty Lionel Messi. And you want him to play with how? All right. He won't. Um, we'll have to wrap up here. Wally Scott, it's, 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 um, it's, it's a very, very, it's a big conversation. Too big. Um, you know, and it has to continue uh, if we need to see better sports and we need to put Nigeria back the way it was and we in 1996. Insist. We um, must insist that our home base players are involved in this, our World Cup, Nations Cup squad. Must. Well, we'll see how it goes. Thank you very much for coming Thank around you, this morning. Good to see you on Fridays, Thank as you, always. Lucy. Thank you for coming. And uh, this is where we will be saying our official goodbyes this morning. Thanks for staying with us all through the week. Um, of course, uh, Merry Christmas in advance. Uh, it's just tomorrow morning. If you missed out on any part of our conversation, well, actually it's tomorrow from midnight. <laughs> if you missed out on any parts of the conversations this week, remember where to catch up. It's simply at Plus TV Africa on all social media platforms. I am Osao Gie Ogbon. And I am Messi Bopo. Do have a Merry Christmas.